Welcome everyone, Kerry ann here from Shabby Art Boutique. I have a project, it's a free printable and tutorial for you today for my Simply Christmas event. Now this is, if you haven't heard about this yet, this is a Christmas event that I run every year that runs through from the 1st of November right through to Christmas Eve and it is filled with fun uh, projects and tutorials and free printables and recipes and all the things we love to uh, put the homemade and home baked back into Christmas and it's all completely free so today I have just the sweetest little project for you I'm loving this uh, it's a little North Pole bakery box a bit hard to show you there because I can't get far enough away it's a three-dimensional box three inches wide so it's wide enough to fit lots of things in there it has the cutest little doors and when you open them there's a box inside and in mine, I've got the Twinings tea, which fits in there perfectly, and home-baked cookies. Now, that's uh, six inches wide by five inches high, so plenty big enough to fill with all sorts of nice things. But I thought baked products is especially lovely because it is a bakery. So I've got a free printable to make this. I'm going to show you right now how I've made mine, and uh, I can't wait to see what you do with your uh, North Pole Bakery box. Okay, let's make our bakery box. Uh, in the printable that you receive, there are three pages. So the first page is your main piece of artwork, which forms the front of the box. So you definitely need that. There are also two coordinating papers that I've made that will match with the box really nicely, but you don't have to use those. You can use any papers you like. Okay, so it's completely up to you. You could change the colorway, you can do anything, but they are an option if you'd like to use these two. So I've printed mine on matte photo paper. It uh, wasn't very thick, probably about 220 GSM. And I've backed it with one of the papers from the uh, printable. So I've used the pink and white paper and I've adhered it to the back. Now look, some people can put cards through their printers and you can just do a double-sided print, but I know a lot of people cannot put that thicker card through their printers. So that is the easiest way to do it. Print your main design and then adhere, just with plain white glue, uh, another piece of paper on the back. It can be the pink one like I've used or you can use one of your choice. Uh, when you're putting, um, when you're adhering them to the back, make sure if you're using white glue that you spread it out really thinly and smoothly. You can use a piece of card or a scraper or something to smooth it out so you don't get any bubbles in there. Okay, so not too much glue. So that's what you need. You need your printed uh, front cover your box and you'll need coordinating papers to cover your white box essentially how it's constructed is is just a basic white box that we're going to adhere the doors to it's pretty simple to make you will need to cut yourself either a piece of white card now this is 12 inch by 11 inch so just slightly smaller than a normal scrapbooking piece of paper so you can use a piece of scrapbooking paper you could use chipboard I've actually just used it's 220 GSM very lightweight card from my local uh, office supplies it comes in a big sheet and I've just cut off this 11 inch by 12 inch uh, you might have something else you can use at home. You're going to cover it with paper anyway, so you could just use a piece of scrapbooking paper. If you do, they're 12 inch by 12 inch. You just need to take one inch strip off of one side. So that's what we're starting with. So we've got an 11 inch by 12 inch piece of card, and then we cut two extra pieces of card that are three inch by five inch. And they're going to form some supports inside to give it some extra strength. So I'll just put all that out of the way just for the moment because we don't need that right now. So this is my 12 inch by 11 inch. So that's 12 inch across and 11 inch down. I'm now just going to score the lines. This is really simple because it's just three inch from every edge. So super, super easy. Just gonna put it on here. Doesn't matter where I really put it. So I've already put the lines on there. So it's three inches in from each side. Give that a couple of goes. Let's just line that up. And the other way, really simple. So I said three inches. Now all of these instructions are actually on the printable for you, okay? So you can refer back to that, so don't worry if you're not keeping up with this. Okay, I'll just get rid of the scoreboard. 
So we have three inch from each border we've done a score line. And I'm just going to just do all those ready to make our box. The next thing we have to do is to make some tabs so we can fold our box up. Now for this construction of this, I am just going to be using a plain white glue. Okay, let's get this around the right way. So I've got the 12 inch across that way, the 11 inch down here. So it's making in the middle a box that's seven inches wide by five inches high. And I'm actually gonna write that on there for you so you can see it. Okay, so this is the five inch side and this is the six inch side. So you wanna make sure you've got that the right way so you get your tabs in the right place. Now I'm just gonna use a pair of scissors. I would normally use a knife, but just uh, so this is really quick, I'm just gonna use scissors. I'm just gonna cut up to that first line on both sides of that six inches. Then I'm just gonna take out a little triangle. This is just so we can make a tab that's gonna turn in nice and easy. See that little triangle there? I'll do one on this side as well. I'll turn it around and do the exact same thing on this side. So just cutting along that score line straight to the first line. Super, super easy. And then cutting in a little triangle. Wrap it out. So what we've got is, this is the side of the box, side of the box, side of the box, and side of the box. These little bits here, these extra bits, they are the tabs. So they're going to fold in like this, which is going to form your box. So I'm just going to use a little bit of white glue. We'll just glue those down. Of course, it doesn't want to come out. pressure on that to get those tabs nice and firmly adhered. Oops, I'm sorry, I think I'm shaking the camera then. Sorry about that. Now we'll do the other side. Okay, so this is just basic box construction. Because we're using it still a lightweight card, I mean, you could use a heavier card if you wanted to. That'd be great, but not everyone has access to that, but you can pretty much get this light card anywhere. So we're just gonna reinforce it to make it a stronger box. There we go. And just make sure that's nice and, I'll try not to shake the camera this time. There we go. So there's our basic box construction. Super, super easy. Now, remember those two pieces, the extra card that I had, the two three inch by five inch pieces? They're actually going to go just in the sides here, just to add some extra strength to the sides. So you just wanna check and make sure they fit perfectly first, and then we're just going to add a little bit of glue to them and pop them in. If you're using a, a lot heavier car, then you wouldn't have to do this step. Just use what you've got available. This is meant to be a nice, quick and easy uh, project. Don't be mucking around too much. Put that one in. And another one. And then we're up to the fun part. We're going to decorate it. Right. Pop that in there. There we go. Now 
now I'm going to leave this for a second just to dry so I know those sides are all nice and strong and while I'm waiting for that to dry I'm going to go ahead and just cut out my bakery box front just right around the outlines okay I'll wait for a second so I've gone ahead and cut out my front cover leaving those little tabs on the side because we're going to need those to glue the doors to the box. So I'll put that aside just for a moment. Now, to cover the box, this is where it's all up to you. You can use any papers you like, as I said earlier. I'm using the papers that are in the printable. I've used the stripe paper to make the lining for the box and the back of the box. So we're going to need two six inch by five inch uh, rectangles to do that. So they're done. For the outside of the box, you're going to need strips of three inch paper. We can't adhere that until we put the doors on. I've actually cut mine. I've just uh, printed on matte photo paper and I've cut just my A4 strip into strips so that I can wrap that around when the time comes. So I'm gonna put those aside. We'll be using those later. For the inside of the box, we actually need to cut it into little panels to fit. So obviously one of these little pieces over here are going to be the lining. Now just to show you that it doesn't matter too much if you just use printing a pattern, I've actually printed these ones just on normal copy paper. There's not a huge difference. I'm not sure if you can even catch that on the, on the camera or not. They're just not as opaque, but that's fine. For inside the box, for the lining, that is going to be perfectly okay. And I have cut two three inch strips by six inch and two three inch strips by five inch and that's to do the insides of the box so we can go ahead and um, actually glue those bits in now and then that part's done and then we'll work on decorating the box so for the inside of the box i'm actually going to put the glue on the inside rather than stick it to the paper see if that works i'm just not sure i've not done this before but bear with me let's get my spreader I think that might be the easiest way to do the back part. A bit of a trial and error here. So I'm just using white glue. Uh, this is a craft, this is not a forever craft, is it? It's not something you're going to keep forever and ever. It's just, it's a gift box. Someone's probably going to throw it out after they've enjoyed it for the season. So we don't want to make it too difficult on ourselves. Okay, so that's just white glue in there. Let's see if this is going to fit in hopefully this was the easiest way to do it and it was here we go push it to place these kind of crafts are always kind of a little bit hard to do on camera but i'm hoping my hands aren't in the way too much and you can see what's going on there so i've put so i've lined the back of the box with the pink and white striped paper now i'm going to pop in the little uh side panels i think it's probably easier to glue those and put them in now a little tip here i've already done it before i started just make sure that your panels fit in perfectly aren't too big because you don't want to get them in with glue on them and then try and make adjustments it's going to be too hard just using my spreader just to spread that out a little bit we don't want lots of bumps not a great view on camera but I'll do my best to be as quick as possible I've just popped one of the side ones in and I'm going to go ahead and keep working on that but I'm going to speed up the camera so it's not too boring for you so hang tight
Now that the inside of the box is all covered, let's move that aside and the outside strips and we can work on the doors. So on this actual cutout, there's tabs on the side and there's a line right down the middle. It's just very faintly drawn there. We're going to cut that in half to make our two doors. And I'm just using a metal ruler and a sharp knife. I'll just make sure I put that right on the line. To a craft knife. Oh, very sharp. So it's done that in one cut. So that's our two halves that are going to make our doors on our box. Okay, so we've done that. Now we need to just score the lights. Let's get my scoreboard. Okay. Otherwise, you don't have to have a scoreboard to do this, of course. And that's lifting a little bit, let me put a little bit of glue just in there. Just come apart. We want that to be nice and firmly glued on. There we go. So of course, by lining that sheet of uh, that design with the other paper, when you're opening your doors up like so, they're going to have that pink colouring on them. both ways. Now we're coming up to what's probably going to be the most fiddliest part of putting this project together. So we need to need to put our doors on. So that six inch side, the longest side is the base of your box. Okay. And your doors are going to sit on here like so. We're going to need to adhere them on. First of all, I need to put some eyelet holes in there so we can tie it closed. So let me just grab my eyelets. Okay, I'm just going to put a couple of little holes in here. I'm going to use that little gap just underneath the awning. I think that's a good place to, to sort of put them and hide them in there. Let's just that out. Oops. Line it up. So I know this is not really good to see on. I'll just try and line it up so I can see, get it in the middle there. That's a good spot. Like the other one. That's going to kind of line up. Okay, as close as I'm going to get it. Oh, pretty close. Put my eyelets in. You might do this manually, I'm just using it with my. Sorry, I'm, I don't think I'm even in camera there. Sorry. Try this one to. Now you can use a clear glue or a white glue to stick these on. So I'll turn it up sideways. So this is the short side, remember. Long side is the base, the short side is where the doors go on. And these tabs are going to glue on here. And it doesn't matter that you can see the writing on the tab because we're going to cover that with paper later on. Okay, and our doors are going to sit on like this. It's going to be a bit wobbly while we're trying to do it. It's a little bit hard to do to show you on camera. But I'm just going to put the glue on and get started. Sorry about the barking dog. That's next door. I can't stop that. Where's my spreader? I'm going to use some pegs just to hold it in place while it's drying. I'm going to line it up as best I can. 
then I'm going to fold it over and make sure it's right position. At least with the white glue, you get a little bit of movement with it before it starts to set. Using my trusty pegs for a minute just to get that in the right position. fiddly one, this is going to be it. It's just Murphy's Law, isn't it? It has to be like that. Okay, so I'm going to get that one in place. Make sure that's really stuck. I'm going to leave this for a few minutes just to dry fully anyway. Because it's pointless trying to work with it if it's all moving around. But I think I've got them in the right position. Oops, I've just buckled that bit up. So I think I will just leave all that to dry for a moment so that it all gets quite firm so we can move ahead. But that's our doors in position. We've got our little holes there, our eyelets to put our ribbon through. We've just got to decorate the back of the box. The top of the box i've just stuck that little piece on before when i was sticking the inside bits in so now we just have to actually decorate around the edges of the box and of course our strips are going to cover up those uh, ones we've just stuck on you're not going to see them they're going to be underneath the strips i'll just leave that to dry just for a minute and i'll come back okay i think that's dried a little bit that's sitting quite nicely i'm going to start gluing on the outside strips i'm going to speed it up for you Okay, my box has been drying and while that was drying, I was looking at what I'm going to put into my box. And I'm going to put tea and cookies in my box. So I wanna make sure that, that base is really sturdy. So this is an optional one, this part. I've cut myself another base that's six inches by three inches, the same size as what our base is. And I'm going to glue that on to the base there just to make sure it's really, really sturdy and rigid and can't move. And I'm actually going to, I'm putting little feet on mine. I'm going to glue my little feet onto there as well. It's very hard to show because I can't turn it upside down because of the top of the box. Now, of course, I could cover this in pink paper as well, but I'm just actually going to glue it on, get that drying. I'm just using a stronger glue, just 
just so I know that's actually going to be in position and really, really sturdy. As I said, this is an optional step. You don't have to do this. I'll do this as best I can on camera. It's just a little bit harder when you're trying to do it and not get your head in the shot. I think I say that every time I make a video, but it's just different to when you're crafting on your own. Sometimes I move things and it's actually not even in front of the camera. <laughs> I don't even realise till afterwards when I'm looking back on it. Okay, I've been able to move that sort of centrally into the middle there. I feel already that's made it really, really sturdy. I'll put a link below for uh, what these little feet are and the glue and everything that I've used. So just to make it easier for you if you're trying to find the same products. Okay, this is a much stronger glue. It's good for things like this. But it might be really rigid and sturdy. get a bit of wriggle room with this glue too it doesn't sit instantly so you can move things around a little bit okay got the last one in position so I'm going to leave that to dry I mean ideally with things like this I usually try to leave them overnight to dry so I know that they're well and truly dry but when I'm making a video for you I sort of need to keep moving along with it but while that is drying, which I've got a little bit of excess there, let me just get that bit off. Right, put it back in position. There we go. Um, while that is drying, I'm going to make up some snow. We're going to put some snow and glitter on the top of it. So I'm going to start getting that ready while that dries. So as I said, we're going to actually really pretty this up with some snow and some glitter to give it some sparkle. You could use a variety of different products. Now, I often use Snowtex. You've seen me using the Arlene's Glitter Snow. Today, I'm going to show you one. This is not my idea. This was actually given to me by Lauren on my design team. This is a DIY snow that she makes. And I used it on my Christmas village. And honestly, it's so inexpensive and easy to do. It's just equal parts bicarb soda and white glue and then you need to add in some white paint as well. Just, all you do is mix it up, you can mix up whatever quantity you like. If you need to make it a bit thicker you can add a little bit more bicarb soda. Um, there's no measurements, it's just half and half and really super easy and quick to make. And I found it just went on so well, so easy. Uh, and of course, you can just put your glue on to your arm, um, your glitter onto it. Sets in no time. So yeah, it was a, it was a great alternative, especially if you you don't have those other products, and they are quite expensive. The um, the faux snow. Put that in there. Now I need to add in a little bit of white paint as well. Otherwise, it has a bit of a yellowy tinge when it dries. Just get that. I think that's, that's a nice bright light. So it's still got that really thick, stiff, hold its own shape texture. Let's get the last of that bicarb into it. There we go. Now I have put a little piece of paper down with a crease in it. Because when I use the uh, glitter, and you can use any glitter you like, I'm actually using the diamond dust from Craft Decor. Uh, whatever excess comes off is going to be caught on here and I can uh, funnel it back into the bottle so nothing is wasted. So this is just a bit, you know, hit and miss, whatever works for you. I'm going to just start at the top and work my way down. And uh, I'll probably 
speed the camera up for you so you're not sitting here forever watching me fiddle. So my snow is just drying and I've just tied a ribbon on. Who knew choosing a ribbon colour would be so difficult but I've ummed and ah between pinks and burgundies and I think I'm okay now with this uh, cherry red because it gives a bit of a pop of colour but it's all still drying. I've done some little bits on the side, on the top, bits across the front, each side I've left the back plain. I've been very careful not to go too close to the edge of the doors just because they're not going to wear well. And I'm pretty happy with it. Pretty happy with how it's gone. I know it's going to dry brilliantly. Um, what would I change? I'm going to make more because I absolutely love this. I think this is just the sweetest little token box. I think uh, I would definitely do the reinforced base. That is really stiff card and that's not going to move at all. That's going to take some weight in there. So if you've got really heavy cookies, that's going to be fine. I do love the feet on it, but you could do it without the feet, but I think they just, you know, take it to that next level, don't they? I would probably, on the next one, I would mount the uh, door picture, the, the main picture, onto heavier cards, perhaps, you know, a 600 GSM, like I've done on the base. I just think that would make it really sturdy, depending, again, you know, who you're giving it to and what you're using it for. Is it someone that's going to adore it and then keep it? I mean, if you're giving this to a crafty friend, they could, you know, keep craft supplies and things in here after Christmas. I mean, they could put it on a shelf. It'd be really pretty and useful. To uh, tie off the ribbon, I literally just did it so simply. I just did a knot, a knot on the inside and uh, just, yeah, easily tie it. Um, I was going to use some... Uh, some silk ribbon but I ended up going with this one I just like the, the pop of colour it gave it I have to get that right now but I just think it makes the whole front pop but you could do pink you could do white you could do a glittery one you could do gold you could do lots of different things but that's our little box so it's a little bit fiddly but it's you know it's not hard it's just a little bit time consuming and let me tell you if you make any mistakes with your paper this, this really easy faux snow will cover anything. I mean, it's still a bit wet mine, but it is drying. Uh, I've made mine, I don't know, I'm not sure if you can see it there. It makes it quite three dimensional. You can build it up. I didn't want to make it too heavy on the front because obviously it's, it's going to weigh it down. But I've, I've built it up a little bit on the sides and on the base there, just as snow would fall. And of course, I've given it heaps and heaps of this uh, diamond dust. So it really sparkles. So that's a free printable. That's for uh, Simply Christmas. It's there on my website. You don't need to be a newsletter subscriber or anything. It's just there on the actual blog post. It will be in A4 size and letter. So you can just go to whichever one's appropriate for you to download. And it's always for any of my free printables. They are for personal use only. But I hope you make some of these and you give these to your friends and family for Christmas. Anyway, uh, I'll be back next week with another project. But for now, Merry Christmas.